Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about my V8 swapped Volvo 240. That's right, this isn't just any Volvo 240. I put a Ford 4.6 four valve V8 in this car. I bought this car in July of 2018, spent about a year converting it to a V8 setup and I've driven this car for about two years and 30,000 miles since. It's been an incredible experience owning and building this car, and today I wanna to talk to you about it. So you might notice how not rusty this car is, and that's because it is a North Carolina car. I was living in Missouri at the time. I went on Craigslist and I found this listing for uh, this Volvo wagon. I called the seller, told him what I wanted to do, and he was pretty cool with it and excited. So we agreed that I would fly out there, pick up the car, and drive it home because flights out of Kansas City were $64 to Raleigh Durham. So I did that, met up with the seller, he drove this car to pick me up, we signed the title over in a Sheets gas station and the rest is history. I actually slept in the back of this thing the first night I had it because I didn't want to pay for a hotel. So uh, yeah, I got to know this thing pretty well very early on. Made it all the way back to Missouri, no issues, and uh, I actually drove this car for a few months with its original engine while I was preparing the donor engine and uh, I really enjoyed it. But, you know, they're really slow. They're really, really slow. So a lot of people know this car for its, well, very boxy appearance. But they're also known for their incredible durability and longevity. It's really incredible that something that's 31 years old today is still on the road being used as a daily driver. What's even more impressive is that the first model of this car came out in 1974. Yes, this car is a 1970s design and it was manufactured from 1974 to 1993. A 20 model year run that even outlived some of its successors like the 700 series Volvos. But even though these cars were reliable and durable, they were extremely slow. This car from the factory had an inline four cylinder engine that made 114 horsepower and that was supposed to power this about 3,300 pound tank down the road. I bought this car with the original engine and it was very slow, probably the slowest car I'd ever driven. Under the hood is a 4.6 liter 32 valve V8 out of a Lincoln Mark 8, a 1998 Lincoln Mark 8 to be exact. I got the donor car from a good friend of mine. He actually drove it down to my place in Missouri from Michigan and we pulled the engine the very next day. I did the rest of it myself putting this engine in here. I designed the mounts, I did the wiring and uh, figured out how everything was uh, supposed to fit. What was fun about this is there's no swap kit available for this particular thing. As far as I'm concerned, this is the only Volvo 240 with this engine in it in the entire United States. I went low budget with this. It's got the four-speed automatic transmission out of the Lincoln Mark 8, and all of the electronics are carried directly over from the Lincoln Mark 8 also. Most everything in this engine bay is Lincoln. The uh, coolant expansion tank is Lincoln, the cruise control controller is Lincoln, fuse box is Lincoln, power steering reservoir, engine obviously, even the AC accumulator or dryer is Lincoln, fan controller for variable radiator fan speed, Lincoln intake tube and filter, Lincoln fan, Lincoln radiator. The only thing that's definitely not Lincoln under here is this. This is a hydro boost power brake booster out of a Ford Mustang. This is much smaller than a vacuum booster and it allows me to have power brakes using uh, fluid pressure from the power steering pump. Now the reason I had to do this is if you look, the uh, cylinder heads on this engine are absolutely massive and uh, there used to be a bunch of open space right here when the Volvo inline four was here, but uh, this is really the only option you have if you want to have power brakes and do this swap is go to Hydro Boost because it's a nice compact unit that doesn't take up very much space. Those with a good eye will notice the Lincoln wheels. Yes, I took the wheels off of the donor vehicle and I put them on here with some spacers. But other than that, that is really the only giveaway on this entire vehicle that anything's been done to it. If you want to go underneath the car, I will show you. We've got the stock solid live rear axle out of a uh, manual transmission car. That's a Dana 30 rear end. It uh, isn't designed to uh, hold the amount of power being put through this, but hasn't broken yet. The exhaust, I've got a MagnaFlow muffler right here. And if you look back into there, those little shiny spots, that is a resonator. The drive shaft is a custom one piece drive shaft made custom by a uh, shop around here. It's a uh, 2.75 inch diameter and that goes to the 4R70W transmission. It's uh, not easy to see the transmission here, but 
you do get to see how I did the exhaust. Um, it was a real adventure getting catalytic converters to fit underneath this car with this massive automatic transmission compared to what was there before. One of the catalytic converters has to go directly underneath the U-joint for the drive shaft, so I've got some heat shielding up there to keep it from, you know, destroying the U-joint, but it was literally the only place I could make it fit. Then under here, we can see our nice new oil pan, courtesy of some really good friends I have, and the transmission pan. What I had to do for oil pan here was I had to take a Mustang pan, cut it, and weld in new metal so I could clear the cross member on the Volvo. I could have cut the cross member a little bit, but I would have had to make some pretty big cuts in order to get the Mustang pan to fit. So that's the route I took. So you may have been wondering, where's the battery? Where did you put the battery? Well, you put it in the butt cheek right here. All you gotta do is pull the string, and there's the battery. Mounted nice and solid in the butt cheek. So as you can see, we've got the interior of the Volvo here. I love the blue. This is not something you see today. This is something very characteristic of the 80s and 90s, and I think it is so cool having a blue interior on this car. It goes really well with the silver, but you know, anything goes well with silver. It's a very basic interior in here. You have your gauges, you've got a clock, speedometer, fuel gauge, and temperature gauge. And you've got a few warning lights too. You've got uh, headlight control, you've got defroster, hazards, AC, a few climate control things, a radio, and that's it. That's all you get in this thing. I did say this car has air conditioning and cruise control though, and that is true. In order to work the cruise control, what I've got here is the original controls out of the Lincoln steering wheel. And what you do with these is you just kind of stick your hand down here. You feel for the on button because, you know, they all feel different. You can tell which control is which just by feeling them. And then you reach for the second set and you hit the set acceleration button. And then you've got air conditioning in here too. All you have to do to run the air conditioning is flip this switch right here and the air conditioning turns on. But that only runs the compressor. See, the way Lincoln did it is they took the signal from the low pressure sensor and they ran it to the climate control module and then that module converted it to a CAN bus signal that works with the PCM. So you can't just run a wire. There's, there's a thing in here that needs to translate that signal. So what did I have to do? Well, in here, you've got the original climate control module from the Lincoln. And what that does is it's just reading the low pressure sensor and then telling the engine computer whether to run the compressor or not. And that's how it had to happen. This module has to be here. I've also got this upgraded to a Bluetooth head unit. So, you know, we're, we're basically in the 21st century here. You've got everything you need. AC, cruise control, Bluetooth audio. And then this tray right here is the best. You know why? Because you can take your phone, which happens to be recording me right now, and you just, uh, well, this isn't going to work too well. You just set it in the tray, and then you can look at your nav. It's great. You can also put ketchup there for dipping your french fries in when you get McDonald's on a road trip. All right, enough talking about this thing. Let's drive it, because I know that's what you all really want to see. Yes, I am wearing my Volvo 240 shirt while driving my Volvo 240 and making a video on it, because why wouldn't you? So, for suspension on this car, I basically did nothing. I didn't do anything with suspension because the original engine was an iron block. This engine is an aluminum block, so even though it's a lot bigger, the uh, weight difference is not enormous. So, you know, ride height, looked pretty good. Handling, not the greatest. This thing doesn't instill much confidence in turns, but that's not what this car is about. The Hydro Boost brakes feel excellent. They, uh, the brakes on this car originally are four-wheel discs, so they're already good, and with the, uh, with the addition of the Hydro Boost, it's even better. The steering is fine. It's a little interesting because I had to shift the rack to the side a little bit because of engine fitment issues. So if you turn one if you turn the wheel one way a lot, you'll make one of the tires scrape the wheel well, whereas if you turn the wheel the other way, you won't get as much of a turning radius. So we're getting on the highway here. It's quite smooth on the highway. It's about as smooth as a regular Volvo 240 would be. 
I've got a little tiny bit of drive shaft vibration, but it's not that much. It's like I said, I've driven this thing 30,000 miles. This car has been to California. It's been to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's been to Colorado. It's climbed Trail Ridge Road. It's uh, driven across the country almost. Um, haven't, it hasn't seen the East Coast, though I'm sure this chassis has seen the East Coast at some point in its life being from North Carolina. You know, it's just been really fun taking this thing places and seeing what it can do and like, I never thought it'd be this reliable, you know? It's got plenty of passing power, as you'd expect, being a big old V8 and a relatively lightweight vehicle. You know, the Lincoln Mark 8 was about a two-ton weight vehicle. Uh, the Volvo 240 is about 3,300 pounds, so we've shaved like about 600 pounds-ish off of what this engine is used to powering, and the rear end ratio is a little bit higher, so it, uh, it, it kind of flies when you floor it, and it's pretty fun. Okay, I'm going to punch it onto the freeway here, because this is what it's all about. That's what it's all about you know that sound that is that is the number one thing I wanted when I built this car was that sound I wanted to hear that getting on the freeway starting at a red light you know you know I think that this is one of the greatest sounding engines ever that's my opinion that's my bias, and that's because my grandpa worked for Ford, and a Lincoln Mark 8 was actually my first car. So, that was the main inspiration behind this, was I sold my Mark 8 after owning it for almost nine years, because, you know, my family, we needed something different, and my automotive tastes were uh, evolving, and uh, somewhere down the line I realized that there's cars that are better than the Mark 8, and if you're a true automotive enthusiast, you should own multiple cars and you know go through them and uh, get different ones. So here we are. But you know I had a Miata and a Jeep Cherokee and a BMW at that time. I wanted to have that Mark 8 engine. I didn't want the air suspension troubles. I didn't want the crappy brakes. I didn't want the you know ridiculous handling. I wanted that engine in this car. So that's what I did. I put this engine in this car. And uh, it's been 30,000 miles, almost trouble free. There have been a few headaches, there have been a few little things that, you know, I've had to do. And, uh, well, I would still drive this thing to California right now. And I'm in Pennsylvania. Probably the absolute worst thing about owning this car is that I am the warranty, to quote uh, Tavares' t shirt. Um, I am the warranty, I am the service manual, nobody can work on this car but me. If I take this thing to a shop, I need to go out on the floor with them and tell them what's going on. And uh, you know, many people that work in shops have a lot of pride and will look at this thing and be like, you know, Jack doesn't have a V8, and you're going to have to convince them, especially when you walk up to them wearing a Patagonia, that uh, no, it does have a V8, and I put it there, and I'm the only one that knows how it got there so I haven't had to do that yet I've been able to take care of all repairs and issues myself with help from some friends but you know that's just the worst part of owning this is you have to live with that and you need to uh, you need to be ready for anything to happen at any point because you don't know what's gonna fail next it's been pretty good I think I did an okay job but you know this thing could just blow up right now but then again any car could the only difference is you could take a stock car to a shop or a dealer and get it taken care of. This thing, not so much. Just, just love that sound. It's so good. I guess the last thing to say, too, is like, you know, this project took me a while. I kind of blazed this trail myself for the most part with, you know, lots of help from people. And, uh, this has been one of the most fulfilling, rewarding things I've ever done. I've learned so many things. I know so much now and I can 
you know, talk to people about this stuff, help people with this stuff, and, you know, I'm just really happy to have that. I just want to give a shout out to Tavarish for finishing his uh, McLaren 675LT because, you know, watching him get emotional in those videos, you know, I, I felt the same way when I drove this for the first time. You know, you go through so much, you do so much work, and you have so much stuff to uh, cover in here. You know, he blazed a trail much more ambitious than this one, and I'm just so happy for him and I know exactly how he feels. That being said, you know, he, he's right, wrench every day. If you wanna do something like this, check out my thread. You know, take something like this on. It's extremely rewarding, it's extremely fulfilling, and uh, you won't regret doing it. But uh, it costs money. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'll see you in the next one.